One of the world's worst climate scaremongers is Antonio Guterres, the socialist who now heads the United Nations. This is the man who first told us the planet was facing code red and four months ago amped it up even more with this. Humanity is on thin ice and that ice is melting fast. The climate time bomb is ticking. But last Thursday, Guterres stopped even that scare with this extraordinary hyperbole. <laughs> Era of global warming has ended. The era, the era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable, the heat is unbearable, and the level of fossil fuel profits and climate inaction is unacceptable. <laughs> the climate boiling. Seriously, joining from London is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, what is going on with this man? Yes, well, uh, he's old enough to remember the uh, climate cooling scare of, of the 1970s when they actually thought we were going to enter into a new ice age. So climate boiling is, is quite a, a transition from there. Soon we'll all be on spits because we'll be climate <laughs> roasting and we'll be looking like rotisserie chickens in the middle of an inferno. Look, it's not climate change denial to, to observe that a lot of the doomsday scenarios that they've painted over the last 50, 60 years just not have not materialized. You know, you insult people's intelligence by, by satirizing the real conversation around climate change in this way and constantly uh, using hyperbolic phrases like climate boiling. The reality is, you know, this is an important conversation to be had. And the people that are monopolizing the conversation are tend to be of a certain ilk, and I, I don't think they have all their faculties together. You know, the, the, um, the Greek Minister for Climate uh, Crisis and Civil Protection recently came out two days ago and said that the wildfires in Greece, that, you know, people like Sadiq Khan were saying this is the proof of Mother Nature's anger and, the, 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 you know, the world is on fire and, it's, you know, everything is going to be destroyed. He came out and said that of the 667 fires, uh, wildfires across um, southern parts of Greece, most of them were caused by humans. So it was either criminal negligence negligence or intent. And yet very few media outlets have actually corrected this, even though they attributed these fires to climate change. When you when you satirize or paint these pictures and then fail to correct uh, your mistakes, people can't take you very seriously. At the end of the day, we are very factual human beings and we have to see uh, a lot of the data before our eyes, not, you know, satirizations of this kind. Yeah, and I've heard reports which I have not yet been able to verify that there was also a slackening off of forest clearing and what we call cool, cool burnings and things like that. But, you know, the language is really amazing, Esther. You know, it started off global warming, then it became climate change when for 15 years there was a hiatus in the warming, then it was climate change. So you could blame everything from, you know, drought to floods on, 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 on global warming. And four years ago, it became global heating. Now it's climate boiling. And like you say, what next? I mean, uh, what, what did you say? Uh, climate rotisserie or something? I don't know. Uh, where, where does Guterres go from here? Well, the thing is, that's the, the, the reality is we don't actually know where they're going to go from here, whether it's going to be climate roasting or climate torching. You know, they're going to find new ways to try and make this trendy <laughs> so we're all panicked. Um, but the reality is there is, there is, there is a serious it conversation that goes on, that should be going on here, that we're not having. Now, his scare, I couldn't believe it, was almost topped last week by Hillary Clinton, which is the former uh, US Secretary of State, Democrat, uh, just got beaten by Trump for, to be president. Yesterday jumped on, or last week jumped onto a heat wave in the US and tweeted, hot enough for you, uh, thank a MAGA Republican, meaning Trump uh, type voter, or better yet, vote them out of office. But in fact, as the data shows that whatever president is in power, Democrat or Republican, the world's carbon dioxide emissions go up without any sign of the US making a difference. I mean, this idea that US president can dial the planet's heat up or down in just a year or to. What kind of idiot thinks that? Well, of course, but this is this is the thing. They're either satirizing the issue or they're politicizing it, both of which will divide the room and really impede conversations that we should be having. Look, when there were a bunch of floods um, in, in Pakistan recently that, um, you know, a lot of people rallied and sent aid over to the country and people were saying, oh, this is because of climate change and Mother Nature is angry. There was very little conversation about the fact that a lot of the money that was funneled to this, this country to actually boost natural defenses against flooding uh, in this way have been siphoned off by, by corrupt politicians. And there's no conversation about that. There's no conversation about the, how impressive and incredible human ingenuity and human adaptation is to various situations. It's all just the world is burning and therefore we must pay more taxes to save the planet.
Uh, why doesn't Hillary Clinton, which is really worried about uh, emissions, uh, fire off a sarcastic tweet at China? That's the world's biggest emitter. No, oh, yeah. Exactly. Who are building more coal guess, mines by the day. Well, I guess... Uh, exactly, exactly uh, right. Uh, but I think they build more in a year than, uh, many more in a year than we have in Australia at all. And we're trying to close ours. That's the cracker. Thank you so much indeed for your time.